Good afternoon, everyone. You have to save your applause for later. My name is Dana Linsen. I'm a film critic from the Netherlands. And I'm basically here to say welcome to you all and tie this part of the afternoon to the second part of the afternoon, which will be the award ceremony for the Robbie Mueller Award. But first, we're going to listen to cinematographer Diego Garcia, who is talking to cinematographer Joris Boelstra, also a board member of the Netherlands Society of Cinematographers. And they're going to engage in a masterclass about everything cinematography. So please welcome Joris and Diego to the stage. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Diego. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So, um, when we first had a Skype call about this, and I asked Diego, uh, what would be your perfect masterclass? He told me he would like to engage with the audience about everything uh, that has to do with cinematography. So this said, I would like to welcome you all to ask questions and don't be shy. Uh, and because we're gonna know Diego in the next two hours, I thought it would be nice to get to know you a little bit before we start. <laughs> So, uh, who is a film student here? Film students? Great. Cinematographers? Aha, uh -huh, nice. Directors? Great, great, great. Film lovers? <laughs> Thank you, all of you. <laughs> great, great. Um, and who wants to say something about a film that Diego shot? Just to start this masterclass. Who saw a film of Diego? And Wants to say something about it? Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> Very shy. They're still shy, Diego. Yes. So, um, my favorite film is uh, Our Time. And uh, I don't know if anybody saw that film. It's, it's beautiful. And um, what I really like about your style is that it has this fluency, this uh, long takes, it uh, gives the actors space to act. It gives us, as viewers, the space to see. And uh, it just has this rhythm and, you know, uh, relaxed quality to it, which I really admire about your work. And I think I see that in most of your films. So that as a start, but please don't be shy, because otherwise we're going to be talking all the time. Um, so Diego, you went to the Mexican film school. And can you, do you do you have any um, let's say what did you take from the film school that is still influencing your work uh, now? Mm, well, um, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure being here and uh, sharing filmmaking with you all. And uh, you you mentioned something about uh, having a style. Uh, um, I wouldn't say that I have a style. I think I work more with directors uh, uh, that are trying and searching for a certain film language. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try to get to know them first uh, as a person and, and, and how they look uh, life and uh, everything, nature and uh, uh, and then I try to translate that uh, afterwards uh, in images and uh, time and paste and uh, um, light, composition, everything. You know? So uh, I don't know if I have a style, like a, something that it repeats uh, over and over, but um, I just try to do something uh, different and that fits into the storytelling and uh, following into the characters and you no, know, I think. Okay, great. <laughs> I think I do feel you have certain things that repeat itself mm -hmm. in films, but maybe through seeing some of the clips we brought from Diego's work, we can all discover a little bit of Diego in every film. Um, I think we, we also talked a lot about directors and different directors you worked with, um, but also from scripts to um, to scene, to imagery. Um, 
would you say that what is the most important thing for you? Is it like reading the script that uh, is, is taking you towards making that film or choosing that film or directors or a combination? Um, I think both, but mostly directors. I mean, if, if there's a director that I, that I really like and that I feel connected with his vision, then I don't even need to read the script. I will be excited about it right away. You know? So, uh, and when I re read a script, I mean, I always take very long. I'm not a very good reader. Uh, uh, when 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 it flows and when it when when it's easy for me, then I found myself like uh, inside and connected with. Uh, what it's going on, what it's happening inside the the story, you know, and the images and the whole thing. And if I stop and I get distracted and walk around, then I still feel like, no, maybe this is not something that I wanted to do. You know? And can you can you give an example about uh, maybe a film we brought a clip from, uh, and how you got to this uh, this image flow or this this style of the film? Yeah, I don't know if it's a coincidence or uh, what, but many the directors that I work with, they like uh, long uh, shots. <laughs> and uh, so I guess I've been exploring that uh, language, uh, like in different ways, you know, sometimes a uh, uh, long dolly track or just like a fixed frame. Uh, and uh, composing all the the mise en scene, you know, like uh, how the actors uh, behave in front of the camera, or uh, how the camera dances with the actors, you know, like many infinity ways. So yes, we can uh, maybe watch something and uh, um, maybe I have another another question about that because what w would you say that it's hard if you make like say a, a, a big shot, a, a wide shot, and you have actors moving in it, and you have you you have a certain movement in it. How do you decide, or how do you do that with the director? How do you pre-visualize that moment in time? Let's say you have an hour and a half of the film. You you talk about that certain scene. There is of course a certain rhythm, certain speed in which which you tell the story. How do you pre-visualize that? Well, I think. Time and the pace is something that, that that we discussed previously, and uh, when we're on set, uh, we already know uh, w w what are we talking uh, in terms of time, and uh, and yes, yeah, sometimes we rehearse. Uh, Sometimes it's tricky because uh, some directors like likes to combine uh, certain reality and naturalism with uh, something much more composed, and that's that can be very challenging because you don't want to lose uh, real life and so, something vivid and and strong, but at the same time, uh, how can you make a um, Happen, no, with the camera movement or with the, the the right light, the right moment of the day, no. So I like to prep, but not not too much. Yeah, I think. Is is that is there something? Is there, like, I think as a cinematographer, we mostly talk about light, camera movement, lens choice, but we are also very much involved in actors placement, uh, actors movement. And there is also this tendency that, as directors, we, we just say, let's just do some acting there. And uh, you guys frame up some shots. Mm -hmm. How do you talk to actors, do, or how do you talk to directors about actors' placement and movement? Yeah, I, I like to uh, get involved with uh, actors' movements and, and, and the whole scene. Uh, I think it's a big part of uh, our work as a cinematographers not only thinking on light or you know that they need to be standing in the right position I, I like to give them and allow them to be free uh, 
uh, in a space and, and to just do their thing, you know, instead of giving them rules and make it everything more uh, stiff and staged. So, so yes, I, I like to be involved and, and uh, talk with the directors about that. Um, and what else? More about, you say, most of Diego's work for me, and it's my opinion, is very stylized, as you said, but still very, um, that you don't really notice camera movement, that you don't really notice, but it has this intention of telling you something. So I was wondering when you do prep and you, you, you think of these shots and you're like, wow, it would be great if they, if they would move around like this or come closer and then walk away again, or I could do this panning and panning back, mm -hmm. which would mean something for the story. But the actors want to do something else. If you would change actor's movement or how you engage them? I think the key is having a, a motivation for everything you do. Uh, if you pan or if you push in the camera, it, it should mean something. And, and, and you're doing it uh, because you're trying to, uh, to say something in particular, no? Maybe an emotion. Sometimes just like an atmospheric moment, you know, that takes you into something else. Uh, so I think that's the key, following the characters, like a uh, state of uh, uh, in, how they are inside. And for me, that's like the engine to follow, you know? And that's how I bring up some ideas uh, uh, for everything, I guess, you no? Know? And I, I think it, it should flow when you're uh, uh, on set in the moment uh, and you feel that it that it's correct then you keep going and then you uh, keep uh, exploring many things and when it doesn't then you stop and and try to follow another path mm -hmm. right right because mm -hmm. it's also so that if you have these wide shots you can't cut away so everything captured in that moment is is in the edit not going to change easily Mm -hmm. Is there, are, you, you do safety shots? No. <laughs> um, I prefer not to. There's some people that uh, they don't feel like very safety to not to have them. Uh, but I think with the directors that I, that I normally work, they are brave and they take risks. And I, I think it, it, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. yeah, sounds great. I wanted to show a clip uh, so we see a little bit of Diego's work and we can also maybe remember what everything we talked about here and maybe get back with you with some questions. Um, I was thinking about uh, Nuestro Tiempo because it's my favorite. And, uh, uh, and we, we, uh, it's a, I will tell a little bit about the story for whom I didn't see it. Um, if I say it right, it's about this relationship between two people, uh, where we, where, where the husband is trying to figure out how to get artistically uh, enriched again because they are in a, this stable relationship, and they are experimenting with their relationship, and uh, and actually that takes their life into another direction. Mm -hmm. Is that in the right description? Yes, it's a, a triangle love. I mean, there's a, a couple and uh, the lover. And uh, I think it's like a family portrait and it, it talks about uh, uh, live, uh, live in the countryside, uh, um, the relationship in family and nature and love and it's mostly about that. I think you see that the hard thing about Diego's, to show Diego's work is that it's, it's, you have to show the length of it, but you also actually have to see what's before and what's after. Maybe that's filmmaking, but in, in showing long takes, it actually that makes, um, that makes it a lot, it gets you more, I think. And that we, we chose a lot of long clips to show you. So get ready for that. Uh, why did you choose this clip? Um, I thought that it was interesting uh, as a simple and short scene, uh, 
It's made out of uh, three shots. Uh, it's almost at the beginning of the film, and it's uh, establishing, or uh, you know, you you're getting to know uh, the two characters that are, uh, later on are gonna have a bigger conflict. Uh, I mean, the film is more about the inner conflict of uh, uh, Juan, the main character. It's not about the conflict of them, but it's important. No? It's actually it's, Juan is the guy on the left. Yeah. Phil so, is the love triangle, and his wife is in the car. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so there you have the 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 triangle in in this scene, the three of them together. Uh, yes, and then um, you get to um, feel the place uh, in a more um, simple and uh, yeah, you feel the time. You know? And why stage it in such a hard time to shoot? Because this is like three shots, but with a lot of length to them. Uh, how do you prepare for a shot for a scene like this? Uh, we shot it in two or three uh, uh, sunsets. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> that and look yeah. most like kind of alike. Uh, so, so they were not uh, behind each like in uh, the the shooting days were not in a row. No, no. So just planning on. Yeah. The same lighting this, conditions. Oh, this that single be. shot takes us like, yeah, one afternoon. <laughs> Great, <laughs> good to know. So this whole film is shot also on anamorphic lenses. Yeah. You want to say something about that choice and about how we can see that in this in this imagery? Uh, yeah, the, those are uh, like vintage Russian lamos, and. Uh, I think Carlos uses them on a previous film, on Silent Light, and uh, he wanted to uh, keep exploring with them. And he was feeling comfortable about the look and the distortions, and 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 he really liked the, the aspect radio, the, the format mm -hmm. Great. for landscaping. And uh, I mean, most of the film is, is set up in, in the countryside, so there's a lot of... Uh, Landscaping. Mm -hmm. So, how did this room in your schedule? Uh, was it already planned like this? Like the you knew this was going. No, the whole, the whole, the whole shooting this whole scene like in three nights. Uh, yes. Is already planned, and is it yes. is that possible because you had a lot of budget or because you were a small team? Uh, it was possible because we hadn't have a big budget. <laughs> when when you are uh, only ten people in the crew then you allow to be free. And that's something that Carlos uh, really cares about. Oh, when, you, you, when you work with a, a, a hundred people crew or something, then you don't have time for anything. Great, great. Okay, are there any questions? Yes. Well, yeah, there is a mic. Uh, so can we please have the mic going to Ruth? And then... Oh, there's another question. Ruth, uh, I'm gonna, uh, the mic is already here, there. Maybe uh, you can stand up and ask a question, please. Yeah, hello, hi, yeah. Can you stand up? Uh, for this Thank sequence, you. was there at any time, uh, you, say, you said, well, three shots? Was there at any time, uh, any time a discussion about uh, a fourth shot on the woman who was sitting inside the car? Mm, uh, no, I don't remember that it was, it was just that quick moment, just her waiting to live. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Diego, you already informed us about the anam anamorphic lenses you use, but I'm very interested in what camera you use behind it. It was an Alexa Mini. Okay. Mm -hmm. And would, uh, would you like to shoot this on film, digital? Is there, was there any discussion? Uh, mm, yeah, I wish to be uh, shot on film, but... Uh, Again, uh, sometimes you uh, struggle with budget, and uh, this was the first film for Carlos shooting in digital, and uh, he wanted to try. Uh, I don't know how he feels about it. 
Is it maybe uh, it helped maybe also to shoot this with a higher ISO with more uh, information in blacks than in, on film? What would change if you would shoot this on film? Uh, I mean, there's always pros and cons, but uh, I think a film like this, it should be shot on film. And why? It's just like uh, a much more straightforward uh, process and more pure, and you are with the actors, sound, camera, and available light. So that's uh, that's like the workflow. No, I mean it worked uh, both ways. Can you explain a little bit more about the workflow that you that you like the most? Uh, you mean digital with, with, or film? Yeah, maybe th that as a starting point, but maybe also like you how how you like to work like in a crew. Um, I I like to to change and and to adapt each film in a different uh, way. No, for example, the, in this case, uh, the whole camera crew we were uh, two guys, just. Uh, uh, Adrian, that was the, the focus puller, the camera assistant, the DIT, the everything, and myself also doing everything. Lighting. Yes. <laughs> Great. Maybe this is a good like bridge to to you working with uh, different directors in different countries. Mm -hmm. Like you worked with uh, with uh, with uh, a Thai director on uh, Cemetery of Splendor. Yes. Uh, how this? How did that happen? How did you get to know uh, him? Well, it's funny because um, I met uh, Joey for the first time uh, through Carlos because um, he was looking for a DP and uh, Carlos, very smart, he threw my name and he told him, well, I'm thinking on working with him. If it works with you, maybe I will consider him. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, and then on, because you also work in Hollywood now, which is a total different system maybe than, let's say, the European system. I don't know how it works. with Thai the system? Hmm? The Thai system? The Thai system, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this is a series to Alta Da Young. Um, how is it to work with a director so known for his visual style? Like, this is Nicholas Winding Refn, Drive and... Only God forgives. Um, this fits your style, actually. But how is well, this I still? Don't know, but... <laughs> how is this? How how do you adapt to a director with such a known style? Um, I don't know. I. Uh, uh, it seems that we just connected very well, like uh, in taste and. Uh, uh, and maybe I uh, I found it a way to translate his uh, universe, and uh, I, I choose this scene, this uh, little piece, uh, to show how he cares the most about um, the whole experience, getting to some kind of uh, hypnotic trance. Uh, and he does it with music, with the mise en scene as well. Uh, very classical camera movement, uh, but very like super, like straight and super tight. Like yeah, mm -hmm. there's nothing uh, wobbly about it. No, I, 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 if you look at it carefully, it's very simple. He shots uh, in a very uh, simple way. He doesn't complicate himself uh, doing like fancy stuff. Uh, it's very straightforward, I think. How did you prepare for him with, with him for this series? Um, <coughs> we we did scout locations. There was script, uh, but we didn't prepare that much. We show up on the uh, on, on the day, and uh, we rehearse with actors, and then. We improvise. Mostly. What is the what is the minimum you need to know about about the story or the scene so that you can work? I think for him it's more about to get the the right mood, 
and the the right uh, uh, atmosphere. No, he he cares about that, and me too. No, m more than uh, being m much more narrative or uh, figurative. No, he likes uh, abstract images. He likes like. Uh, be trying to get something mysterious and that it's not like uh, right away in front of you. No, he likes to work with symbolism and layers in, in, in underneath the images. So um, uh, I really like to work in in this way, just finding it on the moment. And uh, I think we did a, a, a good match. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this uh, this this series is shot by you and by Darius Konji. Yes, who is another hero of mine. We know Darius Konji. He's great, as well. Great. Uh, how did you did you talk about that together? Like, did, did you have many conversations with with Darius about how this would? No, no, no. no. Uh, well, we, he he shot five episodes, and I shot uh, five episodes. It was half and half. Uh, and no, we didn't discuss uh, much about uh, the look or how it should be shot at all. Um, he was like very open and, and he told me that, that I must do whatever I feel correct for, for the, the, the show. And uh, yeah, he told me just like, may the force be with you and yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, what about placing some, because I saw some of the series, and some of the scenes are really like also <laughs> planned out in this magic hour moment, like really, really tight on the, on, on the light levels. Uh, that is something that is also telling a story. Yes. And so that is something that you already discussed beforehand. Is that light? No, it was like mostly improvised in the moment. Uh, in this case uh, as a different in the the previous film that we that we saw uh, I had a, a bigger crew uh, like a proper gaffer and a key grip uh, a whole camera crew and, and what it's normal uh, um, and we worked like in a very tight way uh, everything was very fast so uh, once we found the shots, the camera angles or the or, or, or the tracks, then I was like free to to create whatever I felt correct. So it was kind of having a blank canvas and a whole like uh, lab open with colors, with uh, technology, and uh, great. Yeah. yeah, I had a, a great DIT, and I was like. Uh, mixing uh, lighting, camera, DIT. So I was like playing around like, like a kid. And c can, you, can you tell us about uh, the difference between working in the Mexican, the Brazilian actually, in Arrest 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 Tiempo, no? no, it's Mexican. Mexican. Mexican system and then going to Hollywood and shooting there. What were the diff main differences for you? Well, in the US there's uh, uh, lots of rules. Uh, because because it's it's part of uh, different unions and uh, sometimes for the good sometimes for the bad. You know, I, I, it's something that uh, as a foreigner you need to adapt and flow. Otherwise, uh, you will just broke. You know? uh, so I always try to take advantage of uh, of the good things and not to stay like in the in their bad rules that they have, no? and and yeah, flow with with different systems. I think no, because this one you didn't op operate yourself, because that is normally how you work. Yeah, I, I prefer to operate always. In this case, I I had uh, sometimes two cameras, not always. Uh, two operators, and it was the first time for me, like uh, walking with a uh, uh, radio with the operator. No, little more to the left, more to the right. And at first, it was like annoying for me. Uh, I, I thought that I was spending a lot of energy, like getting the right shot. Uh, I prefer, like, okay, uh, give me the camera. No? 
and and later on I started to understand the system no and sometimes it was better for me to stay uh, with Nicholas at the monitor and and think about the whole composition the 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 rhythm no the, the what, what was going on inside the scene and there was like very talented people that was doing what we were looking for no? So in a way, it, it, it was smart, and it, it was like a whole machinery working together. Would you uh, do it again with this, the Mexican director in a new project? Like not operating, but being behind monitors, having these guys? No, I think it, it doesn't work like that, no. Oh, I don't know, maybe it will be like an interesting mix. And does it give a more intuitive move, movie film when you when you operate yourself? Is it I prefer it, yes. Yes, because you, you give your, your your feelings and your your, your exact uh, motion, you know, your, your body language. And I think it's important to translate, the, uh, yeah. It's part of it, no? When you have an operator, sometimes it gets a little mechanical. Well, maybe I need to find like a, a, a someone that I really, uh, that he understands what I really want, like very precisely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, so you work with a different crew, of course, on a different uh, in uh, in LA or in in Mexico or in Brazil. Yes. But um, did did you ever bring your gaffer or your folks puller to another project? Like you wanted to stay as a team together. Now my base. I mean, I don't have a base. I, I can work with anyone. I'm always like very uh, happy to get to know talented people all around. So uh, I like that. No, to I, I really enjoy uh, meeting people and 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 learn about different cultures and different uh, ways to express uh, something. No, and different techniques. But the my la la latest works I very close with a, a key grip and a DIT in, in case it's uh, digital. And and why those two people, what, what do they bring to your project? I, I don't know, I just trust them. And I think they understand the, the, the way I, I work the best. No? And they, and they really helped me to, to achieve what I'm, what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Great. Any questions? No. All right. Oh, there's a question. Yeah. <clears throat> I would like to get back to the previous shot, uh, Nuestro Tiempo, uh, because, uh, you know, as you said, it's quite the beginning of the movie and the characters are introduced. But uh, what is what I found very interesting and I love the movie is that uh, we don't see their faces. We don't know them yet, but we don't see their faces. So I would like to ask you uh, about that decision, who made that decision, and why did you decide to use a natural light? And there is uh, other shot, which I love in uh, Nuestro Tiempo. It's the landing uh, plan, which is it's an extraordinary shot. And I would like to know, how did you make it? <laughs> well, going back to the, uh, that scene, um, I think the the choice of uh, shutting it at dusk. Uh, I, I think it was more about this uh, um, special feeling about uh, talking, like uh, at the end of the day, with that magic moment that only lasts around 20 minutes that you are talking with someone, but at the same time, you don't know if, if you're looking at him, uh, you know? It's, uh, I think it's a sp special moment of the, of the day. Um, and it's a little dark, yes. <laughs> uh, so they don't see their face each other, maybe? I think it's free to and open for uh, different interpretations. And for the helicopter, uh, yeah, it's a helicopter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, uh, our flying uh, Mexico City, 
uh, in the rainy season. This this was like a very uh, important decision for Carlos to shoot it uh, in uh, during the summer because you get to see a lot of clouds and it, it makes it like much more dramatic and. Uh, yeah, it was important to him uh, to to feel those mountains and the edges of the city. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? I see a hand there. Can you have a mic there, please? Um, I also had a question about the previous scene. Um, first of all, um, what did you decide on the recce to make the last shot, like the pen going left and right? Did you decide that on the recce already? So that's the first question. Uh, yes, I think that shot, it was uh, already established uh, before. Yes, yes. It was, I think, actually even storyboarded. Okay, mm -hmm. sick. And then the second, <laughs> then the second question is, um, you l use only natural light, right? On that film? Uh, no, on that particular shot. Because yes. then um, you only use the oh, light. Oh, and there's the car. Uh, yeah, practical bulbs in the house. Yeah, on the wall, right? Yeah. So, did you have one of those on a dimmer, or did you and the uh, one of the two to match the lighting ratios? Uh, probably on a dimmer, and uh, and also we turn on the the tail lights of the truck. So it was on the tail lights, the dimmer. And no, not no, on no. The practical dimmer sometimes. on the practical. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's ah, and the headlights as well. <laughs> Let's talk about how dark is dark, because we, we, we just referred to that as a question as well. You work with a DIT, which is a digital imaging technician. How technical is, uh, is that conversation with him? Is this person deciding that it is too dark or...? Yes. Uh on my latest works, uh, I've been exploring this uh, new tool, and I found it uh, uh, like a wonderful and uh, open way of creativity. And uh, this guy that I really trust, uh, he's uh, uh, very smart and sensitive. And uh, we work and do some kind of treatment on the image, uh, on the on the levels of black, color, texture, uh, and you can do so so many things. No, in combining uh, what what you're getting from the lens, the sensor, and of course the the lighting that you're using. So it's like a, a, another tool. And are you direct? Is this this person is directly uh, working on the image, or is that a preset lot that you view and where no, you work no. on? I mean, in in tool to die young, uh, it's a good uh, example for that. It's on set with his computer, and he's just manipulating the image as as in the same moment. How, how technical do you have to be to understand all the levels and where you want to go in the end? Because you have a a plan, mm -hmm. you see it on set, mm -hmm. when do you l start lighting and when do you just uh, turn a knob on a, on the computer? I just bounce back and forth in like in the three camera lighting the IT and just uh, uh, start shaping the image until I like it. Mm -hmm. And you still use a light meter? Sometimes, yes. And, and when? No, well I normally use it. Yes. But you, you, how do you use it? Do you use it to decide a base stop or you really scan the whole image for highlights and lowlights and where you want to be? Yeah, I think I use like a base and then I think if how far I want to go to to the highlights or the shadows. Mm -hmm. no? Any technical? Like very traditional. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, but that's great. I think it's good to to hear from you that you still use the light meter as a as a basic reference, although digital, of course, gives us all new uh, uh, possibilities. Mm -hmm. Anyone wants to ask something technical? Now we're doing lots and uh, computers and no, <laughs> great. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm not very uh, technical. Uh, I, uh, um, I, I prefer just to use intuition and you know what, whatever I feel that it's correct for the scene. Uh, I just use all that film tools, uh, uh, yeah, as bridges to to express myself or whatever the scene needs. Is it, is, it, is it not so that you need to have all this basic technical knowledge, get sort of accustomed with it, and then you go to that step? Because you already are way up there. Of course, you are very technical because you know all this basic. Yes, but I don't pay much attention to it. I just use it. Right. Yes. I mean, I, I don't go very deep on that. Yeah, but and, and I translate more like maybe that's that. Uh, I mean, I, I have my own language, and uh, uh, yeah, I think it, it's on the moment I, when I start shaping the image. Uh, I don't go like very technical, or well, maybe I do. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> think, yeah, but that's so hard to say. Maybe yes, it's, it's a bit of a it's combination. Technical and yes, but when it when technical stuff becomes more like you can use it like yes. that, that's maybe the step you need to take. Yes. Or So I'm not thinking about the technical stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. one more question about technical stuff, because I know we, we said we would skip that bit. Mm -hmm. But do you have your own monitors uh, on set? Do you use the same monitor to view stuff on? You mean if I have my own monitor yeah, calibrated? Yeah, like the same monitor on no. every project. No, different monitors. I don't care about uh, machines and... So you and use the eye as yes. a, and, the, and the light meter? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to know that. <laughs> um, I think um, we still have some other projects to and clips to see. Maybe a question? Uh, there is a question over there. And can you please stand up and then we can all see you? If the mic is getting to you, there it is. <laughs> um, I have a question about the editing. Uh, like, do you uh, do you watch cuts of films, or um, or is it more like when it's rough cut is ready done, then like you can watch it? Like, how how do you work uh, while the director? Uh, works on the editing of the film. Um, in some cases, I, I get involved with the editing. I, I really like that. When directors uh, ask me for my um, input, uh, because we kind of build the language together, and uh, sometimes they, they ask me for what I think about this or that. And uh, I think it's, it, it, I, I like it. I, I like to be part of that. Uh, normally I have my point of view. Maybe sometimes it's not the right one. Uh, of course, I don't have the final word, but I, uh, I often uh, bring some ideas, you no? Know, because uh, like I said, uh, we create the, the rhythm, the pace, and and that's part of of uh, of the whole thing, you know? the the whole uh, universe that we're trying to create. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they edit uh, on the day. That is not like uh, very useful. Sometimes you can get like much more confused. Uh, I think it's better just to leave it and then you take it. It's interesting because I was thinking about that in the Netherlands where we we don't have uh, large budgets, to at least 
where I'm working in. But I was thinking that that would be interesting to see the day after the edit of the scene, but that is not interesting. That's Sometimes it's useful just to uh, be sure that you have everything you need, you know, like to be safe, but uh, I think you, you, you know it. You don't need to go to the monitor and watch the the montage of the scene that you shot uh, the day after, the day before. Sorry. So more like a just a check, a quick uh, check without even. Yeah, and how does it cut these with these? But uh, you can already know, you know. Is that is, is that um, because you ha from script to imagery, you said uh, you storyboarded some scenes. Of the Nuestro Tiempo. Yes. But how do you, how do you write a shot list? No, not shot list. Uh, just storyboards, and not for the whole thing. It, it, just for a few scenes. You, you draw them yourself? Like no, Carlos did. Ah, mm -hmm. right. And but on other film projects, let's say, uh, on the on the new film you did on uh, uh, on wildlife, I did some storyboarding on wildlife. Yeah. Oh right, mm -hmm. okay. but did, just for a few scenes. But then you sit together with another with, artist. No, with Paul, with the director. And he is drawing. No, I did. You did the drawing. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you have to be good at drawing. Well, some sketches, you know. <laughs> um, so this film is about the storylines about this uh, relationship uh, with uh, with the boy Joe, who is I think the main character, who, his perspective we see, and the relationship who is falling apart and how they maybe refine each other in the end is that uh, um, correct yeah kind of it, a it's love triangle a, with them with a family. no it's a family portrait uh it's a period uh film uh about this family that uh, just moved to a small town in montana and uh, and the father uh, loses his job and uh, gets in a, some kind of a crisis and decided to go to fight these uh, wildfires. And uh, there's like a uh, reconstruction of the family. And the whole film is uh, through Joe, the the kid, uh, eyes. It's more about his perspective and how he uh, um, lives all this. Uh Can we play back this scene without the sound? Because um, this movie has some, as we saw, some track outs and uh, some camera movement. But a lot of the scenes are also very static in which Let's we we start handheld, but um, let's say the diner scene we saw, and some other scenes I saw in the film are are that people are moving in the frame, but the frame isn't moving. Um, sometimes you don't correct on certain cues, like he's laying on the couch, he's getting up, but he's like almost mm -hmm. cut like that. W what choices were uh, were giving you that 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 was the right frame to choose? Again, I, I don't think that we use certain kind of rules for the language. I think it was always like open to to find the right camera setups to each scene. Uh, but it, it, I mean, it's a small film, but it's uh, very meticulous crafted. I think like in every single small decision. Uh, Paul and I, we care very much because uh, I let's say this scene. What, what, so she, he is seen with his mother in the foreground, but his shot is single, single uh, shot. Is that how does that? Uh, is that also something that's written in the script? Like that is how their relationship is. No, I think th those are the things that you don't do like in a rational way. You just. Put the camera and find it, and you feel. Well, what does it say for you then? In, why why did you choose this? Uh, to have Joe clean and. Uh, yeah, or actually, Joe is with her in the foreground, and she's clean. she's clean. She's, yes, he's looking at her, but we see her through, we see him through her. 
like in an over shoulder. No, I'm 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 sorry. I don't know if there's like a um, something um, um, that I can explain about that. But I it, I, it just felt uh, right for us. No, and we were exploring about this. It's a, a good question because we 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 did try different things. And that was like the combination that we most uh, liked for that moment. And that testing is that something you do? That's something you do before you start shooting. Is that something you do in rehearsals? You already yes. compose shots. Yes. Well, that uh, foreground thing, it was on the moment. Yeah. Right. And are they? Is she really driving? Is, this is a no. is this a lighting uh, nightmare. Like driving cars, yes. inside cars. And period cards, it's a nightmare. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, because they are old, they don't work uh, well, and uh, Carrie, uh, I mean, she's a wonderful, amazing actress, but she preferred to have like a process trailer or that. Yeah. What kind of problems does that and, give you? And also, there's certain rules, you know. Uh, safety rules and and you have to follow them no um, yeah and then we did this pob joe's pob just like a, a straight light panning to show the the station uh, it was through joe's eyes no it was kind of a um, like the money shot, to say it in one way. So you, you, you show the whole uh, stage up just in one shot and we composed the whole, the, the tents and the, the, the firefighters, everything. It was like very well composed and crafted, no? To sell it in one shot. I mean, to have the, the whole feeling of the place just through Joe's eyes instead of having like uh, many shots all around, you know? Yeah. I, I think it was just following uh, uh, the character, you know, what he was uh, experiencing and feeling. Same as here, you know? We have like a very intimate, uh, tight close-up experiencing the fire. And it is you panning up into not fire, but that that's yes. CGI later? Yes. And can you tell us about when you read the script, you knew it was going to be in the 60s. Uh, what what did that do to your lighting choices? Uh, well, we, it, yeah, it, it's a period film, but we wanted to make it something uh, contemporary, not like with a vintage look or... but with some character. And uh, I, I just used... Uh, as much as uh, available light as possible. You know? I, I think that was important to create the, the feeling and the, the environment, the whole atmosphere, you know? like very na natural and simple. Yeah, it has this really soft contrast. So I, was, I thought that, my, that this might need a lot of light to get that really soft contrast and that it has contrast, but it's filled in with some big, bigger sources. No, for me it was more about finding the the right place, the right spot for the scene, and the right time of the day. All right. And lens-wise, does it? What, uh, did you choose like Cooks or other uh, older lenses? You said you don't want to give it that much of an old vibe, but mm -hmm. those are Panavision Primos. They were made out in the 90s, so perhaps now they are vintage. <laughs> No, and they're like very clean and correct, but they have a like uh, some character. Can you, can you also talk a little bit about focus and why you choose s certain shots to be have a really shallow depth of field, and sometimes you have more depth of field? Yeah, this is more like uh, like you see normally, no, in in daylight inside a, a diner. Uh, nothing very uh, style, stylized or uh, fancy. It's very clean and, you know, simple. For us, uh, simplicity was like uh, our source, no? Like less is more. And once in a while, when the scene needed it, 
for example, that tight close-up, uh, I did use a, a P Vintage 50 T1, which was like a very shallow depth of field. So you just keep on on his eyes and his like deep in his expression, you know, like going inside of him, but only for those. Yeah, and in the end, maybe when he's talking to his father, in the end, you have also have this scene as well. Which, Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was. I thought maybe sh you used even shift tilt because the focus was so so yeah. small on the on the face. Yeah. No, it's a so very nice so. lens. Uh, so we we had it like there, and it was our special tool for that moment. Do you have special tools on every project? Like you, you choose something that you might use, or you? Yeah, sometimes I have like uh, something like there in the corner waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um, I'm thinking now, maybe there are some questions. Yes, a lot of questions. Maybe go for some questions. Um, where's the mic nearest? Oh, can you stand up, please? Hi. Um, I was wondering, when I look at your work or practice, I notice a certain intimacy, but also closeness, directness. I think it's always about being, uh, being a human, moving around, connections. Um, and also when you explain about your way of working. Um, I was wondering, what is it for you that makes cinema the, um, yeah, not, a, not a right, that's not a good word, but the material to work with to translate all those ambiguity, I don't know how to say, is that a good English word? Ambi ambiguiteit? Anyone else? I don't know so how to I say I can't translate English. that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it has a lot of crossover, so it touches all the time, I think, a lot in all the movies that you work in. So my not so direct question is um, like the vitality that I see and the way on being uh, what makes it for you that cinema is the material to work with and to translate those um, kind of big things I don't know if it's a really direct question but I was wondering no thank thank you uh, I think you answer it for me uh, uh, I found uh, filmmaking and uh, working on cinema um, something very close to uh, uh, human behavior and uh, with nature and uh, uh, I think it's a wonderful way to explore this so yeah, I, I found it fascinating you know, working through images and, and symbolism Mm -hmm. researching this mm -hmm. it, it, can I ask a question that maybe the mic can travel because uh, um, what are your inspirations to to am amplify on your style so style used in the in the context of your feelings in cinema and how you use them but how wh who inspires you to Dutch painters no no, no well yes <laughs> Dutch painters. Oh, right, sorry, I was like translating. But yeah. No, 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 I really like Dutch painting. Uh, but no, many things, mostly nature. I think that's like the base of my inspiration. Uh, and uh, human relationships. And, mm -hmm. but, I, but, but I also love painting and music. Okay, next question. Um, my question is, uh, how do you cooperate with production designers in pre-production? Do you have meetings with them or do you, uh, does all the uh, communication go through your director about the colors of shirts or uh, which, which uh, sides to shoot? Because you, don't, you say, I don't make specific shot lists or I don't uh, picture every, uh, all, the, um, all the images. How do you say, how, you, how do you tell them? And Yes, well, uh, it's not that I uh, have a only one way to uh, work. There's always a different approach depending on the director. It's not up to me. Uh, sometimes they like storyboarding. Sometimes they just go on set and improvise. Sometimes, you know, it's always different. It, it, it depends on the director. And of course, there's uh, big and deep conversations with the uh, art director and production designer to find uh, 
the whole world, the whole uh, color palette. Uh, uh, I think it works as a triangle, no? again, uh, director, production designer, and cinematographer, all together, like uh, working as a cir circle, no? a triangle. Or, uh, I think it, it, it needs to flow uh, um, with, with ideas, and not only uh, from those three. I mean, I like when everybody is involved. And if someone brings up a good idea, and if, if it fits on the film, then it's very welcome. Mm -hmm. But yes, production designer always is, uh, is uh, an important key of the whole creative process. Let's say in this example we just saw in the diner, she's wearing red. That could have been like too, let's say, too expressive. Mm -hmm. But is that is that done something you choose together with the director, or is that some suddenly on set she's read? Sometimes no. It, sometimes it's important to to find the 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 right color contrast with the settings, uh, wardrobe, uh, everything. I think every single detail counts for what you're telling. No, uh, as a cinematographer, I feel responsible for every little thing that it's happening in the frame. Do you make a, a lookbook or an, uh, an, a sort of uh, aesthetic color book before you, you go? No, I wish to, but uh, I never do it. It's, it's a time question or is it? I don't know. I, now I'm uh, starting to understand that maybe it's not the way I, I work. It but I, sometimes I look, I look at those beautiful uh, inspiration books and they're like very nice and takes you into something, but I, I, I think it's not something that I naturally do. No? And is there then also a chance that on set suddenly she comes in and she wears red and you say, hmm, yes. maybe not this red? Yes. And then there can be discussions about that. So there, that's yes. to, to make it more alive or to... to <laughs> yes. How do you, how do I you mean, it's it? better to have those conversations before and not on the moment. Yeah. So, but but sometimes it happens. No, no. This this uh, green is, it's taking too much attention and it's too bright. Let's let's try something different. You know. Uh, but it, yeah, it's better to have those uh, decisions uh, before you you, you're on set. I guess on these big productions, you also have uh, pre-production meetings and. Mm, walkthrough yeah. meetings where you have all these people pre rep uh, presenting their, uh, yeah. their dress, like clothing, makeup. How much do you in, have to know about makeup? In in the US system, they love meetings. <laughs> <laughs> they do meetings for everything. So they have to be sure because yes. No? And does that mean it can't change that easily? or is No, you can change it, but you have to go to the meeting and then... <laughs> And then once again another meeting to double check that it, it, we're in the same page. Yeah. My question before was about the makeup. Do you do shoot a lot of tests with actual clothing, actors, and makeup? For some particular scenes, yes. Uh, I will say that I don't love makeup. Uh, I always prefer to make it natural. Sometimes, you know, it's good to kill some sheen or to, depending on, 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 on the scene, no? If, he, if the character needs to feel sweaty, then yes, no? Uh, it's more on the character. But when you use makeup, makeup just to make it pretty, then uh, I don't like it. Because it feels, uh, uh, you know, fake. Right. I saw some more questions. Hello. Thanks for being here. I grew up some 10 kilometers from here in a neighborhood that uh, had small houses and small gardens under these beautiful gray skies. And I can imagine you grew up in a completely different environment. And I wonder how your youth or your uh, background influenced who you are as an artist right now. Well, I grew up in Mexico City. Uh, it's a crazy city, uh, full of uh, colors and uh, cows. 
uh, it's an interesting place to grow up because I was telling Jerry that uh, it's uh, it's somewhere where you can be standing in one corner and you can be experiencing like different layers of reality at the same time. Uh, and uh, that's where I grew up. You know? uh, like many things happening uh, so fast and uh, uh, very contrast. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mexico City, it's mostly also very gray, but for the pollution. Uh, but the countryside in Mexico, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, um, you already have some. Well, you already have something about the uh, makeup and uh, costumes, but that is something I really want to ask you. That is, you know, how uh, how far you go to with the costume designer of in the production? How far you can go changing structures of some uh, patterns or colors? As far as I can. Uh, I always like to be involved with that, no? Like I said, I feel like uh, responsible and for me it's important to to take uh, big decisions for the image, no? That's like my ground. How much prep time do you normally, or how much prep time would you like for a film? Like maybe wildlife? Yeah, I like prepping for sure. It it, it takes you into a healthy air uh, shooting, but uh, I don't like to prep more than you need, because then you start just to uh, go ar around once again to the same thing, and 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 you start killing the 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 ideas. I don't know how to express this. I think there's a certain level of prepping that it's yeah like good, healthy, and then you just need to shoot it. Otherwise, it's boring. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I ask you uh, because that f is uh, connecting to it maybe? Um, uh, you just mentioned, you mentioned a important tool for cinematographers: the time of day. Can you? Talk a little bit maybe about how it is in different countries with different directors, uh, with different films. How do you work with that, with planning, with limitations, time limitations, etc.? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's so many factors for this. Uh, I think the first one and, and most important is, like I was saying, the, the way that the director approaches his creativity, uh, not only f uh, on the script, but how he likes to work uh, building the scene. Uh, for example, uh, with this uh, Brazilian di director that I work with, uh, Gabriel, uh, he's uh, very energized. Uh, he cannot stay like seated for very long. Uh, and once we start doing some uh, table work, you know, like trying to shot list, then he stands up and prepare like a smoothie or something. And he's like very fast on his ideas. And uh, I think this is like an example of someone that works more on the ground. When we get into the location, then he started to, to feel like powerful and to find shots and how why if we move the camera here to tell this and that's how he works that, that's his uh, workflow you no know? and i cannot like uh, push him to sit down gabriel let's do this and no it's not his way you know? and uh, talking about this uh, it's related with budget with time of course uh, because some, sometimes uh, this takes a little longer to get the, sh the shot. Um, like an average in, in his films, we shot like two shots, two sh scenes per day, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. And mostly they are like very long shots. Uh, and yeah, I mean, if you see the, the, 
the quantity, it's like terrible. How can you just shoot two scene, two shots per day? No, it's not. No. In the American system, this will be like bad, very bad. No. <laughs> So I think it's related on the director's creativity and his uh, workflow process, uh, and so on. No, it's different with, with uh, each one. Also in different countries. I mean, like in in Mexico, it will be different than in the United States. So if you want to make a want to make an early sun coming up or something like that. Yeah. Um, well, in Mexico. I haven't shot that many, so many films there, uh, but I know the system. If it, if it, if it's there, if it's one, uh, uh, it's very free, and uh, it's uh, each production has like a different way to approach. Uh, um, there's no much rules about like union or time, or uh, it's a little more messy. No? Um, and and also, I mean, in the U.S. system, it, it is much more formal, and and you get the shots. No, uh, yeah, it pros and cons. You need to just take the best of each one. Hmm? Do you try to influence the shooting schedule in that respect? In terms yes, very much. Okay. Very much. I I I get involved with the. Uh, with the, the time of the days of uh, what to shoot, of course, I mean, this is like priority for me, no? I, I prefer to choose the time, the, the right time of the day, rather to have like a big uh, truck with a heavy gear. For me, that's much more important. Uh, but sometimes I need to, uh, a big truck to get the scene. Uh, so I try to, you know, make a balance and, and, and do the right choices and fight your, you know, choose your fights. Mm -hmm. Does a recce mean for you that you stay on that location like all day to see all the light changes? Sometimes, yeah. Like the light studies, I like. Mm -hmm. And I mean, do you take fo photos then or, or do you remember or your light meter or...? I watched. I I like to observe. <laughs> Great. Yes. Uh, and yes, yeah, sometimes uh, in certain films you 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 don't get to have uh, available light like all day because you you have to set up a long scene, so you need to recreate that uh, beautiful available light artificially. So that's when it gets a little more tricky. No, and combining. No, maybe part of the scene it's available. Part of the scene you bring a, a unit to fill. So, yeah, I, I I think I don't have like a formula or rules. I just. No. Do you sometimes let's say you you plant that scene at a certain hour where the sun comes through and it's not sunny, it's cloudy? Can you ch change the not shooting that scene? Sometimes I try for sure. If it really, if it's like, did that happen in a, in one of your projects? Yes. Can you give an example, maybe? No, I don't remember like a good example for that. But yes, I always try to fight for for the right lighting and the the right feeling of, of for the scene. No, but sometimes if it gets cloudy, then cloudy it is, and then. You don't know, you never know, and you can get something beautiful as well. Yeah. No? So it's uh, you would adapt to this to what you are given, or you would try to emulate sun. No, no. Well, I uh, depends. I think it depends. But I, like lately, I I've been trying to just uh, flow a little more with those kind of things and not to get like so stubborn like it has to be like this like this now i'm try trying to be like much more open for those situations and and just like surprise myself for something new that i n maybe didn't imagine it no and what what made that change in you cuz then before you were trying to more con Control it a little bit more. Yes. Um, why? Did, how did that change come? Is that more experience or? 
I don't know if experience, maybe it's uh, trying something different to evolve, you know, a different way to uh, face uh, uh, like a problem or a situation that maybe is not a problem anymore and it's like a, something in, that gets into your side. You know? mm -hmm. Great. And how do you, how do you uh, learn, how do you progress? Do you watch your films again and again or do no. you... What do you study? Do you read a lot or? Uh, basically music. I think that's like my uh, more con constant uh, inspiration. And how does that, uh, what kind of music and wh how does that inspire you? Uh, it's interesting in, 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 in how you can grow to become better at what you do. Well, I guess all arts are related and connected in, in a way. Uh, I found music uh, very close to filmmaking. Uh, if you think about uh, time, rhythm, silence, silence, um, color, harmony, chaos, <laughs> no? and all those kind of uh, words that maybe you can take into uh, cinema. And did you ever try and operate a certain scene on music while not maybe on the Oh, yeah, the many that? times. Yeah? Yeah, many directors. Nicolas always liked to play his playlist like, and put the actors into a mood and trance. Yes. And does, can you give an example of a, of a scene you shot with you getting specific music from a, from a director? And what kind of music was that? Yes. Maybe in your latest film, because we didn't see a lot of Divino Amor yet. So, is that, is that, did that happen in that, in that film? No, no, he didn't use uh, music for the scenes. No, yes, we did use. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, yeah, we can play something uh, for, yeah? from Divine Love. Can we see which, which one do you want to see? Uh, I don't remember which one was first. Sh shall we just play the first one and we can maybe cut it and yeah. go to the second one if we like that one better? Yeah. Thank you. I think it's a long one. but It's a long one, but yeah. it's beautiful. So wait, let me tell you one uh, small thing about the film so you, you guys have a bit of an idea. This, this film is now in theaters, so please go and see it. It's nice. Um, it's, maybe you can tell it, because every time I say something, you have to correct me. Oh, really? Sorry. <laughs> yes, but it's in the no, future. I'm, I will I'm, say it's in the future. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're right to correct me. Can you tell a little bit about what the film is about? It's, um, um, it's near in the future uh, in Brazil. Um, oh, it's complicated. Okay, then, then, I, then I go and have, yes. a, have a bite in it. Yes. Uh, it's, it's about a couple who can't have children and... Uh, and get really religious to try and uh, get a child. And uh, maybe that's all I can say about it, because otherwise I ruin the ending, because you guys still have to yeah, see Yeah, she's very spiritual, uh, and she believes uh, strongly in God and in his word. And uh, she's involved in these uh, divine love uh, sessions. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about why you chose to show us this scene? Interest, interesting choice, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I will say that uh, from our previous film, uh, working together uh, with Gabriel, uh, he was uh, researching or uh, interested on, on the beauty of a human body, uh, female and male. And uh, of course, we, we wanted to, to do it with all respect. Uh, and uh, well, that's for the sex scene. You know? um, these uh, three different, four different uh, sets uh, are trying to construct uh, this uh, divine love universe that in a way it's uh, like a different planet, different I universe uh, full of like watercolors. Uh, and we wanted to 
to like transport uh, audience to a different place in a very simple way. I mean, the settings are just uh, curtains or just a wall, you know? So um, it's like a, a religious uh, ritual. Uh, I prefer not to, to talk a lot about the film, but what it's important uh, now, it's like a r religious ritual, no, about uh, fertility um, and love in between couples and, and bring together uh, marriages. No? Uh, and again, Gabriel is also interested about uh, um, symphony and, and moving the camera as dancing with the, the choreography, as, uh, as blending together everything in one. Uh, so in this case, we move the camera very slowly, uh, constantly. It never stops. Well, at the end of the sex scene, I think it does. But it's more about uh, invisibly getting into a rhythm and getting into uh, uh, hypnosis again. No? Um, we were influenced by uh, two uh, artists, Dan Flavin and Ola Fura Eliasun, uh, for the whole uh, Divine Love setting. Um, what else can I to tell about this? Yeah, Any maybe, questions about this? Yeah, scene? maybe questions, because I can imagine there are many questions. I have a question, but not specific about the scene, but is that okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was wondering at what stage would you like to be involved in production? Some cinematographers would like to be involved during script phase and otherwise yeah, at the end before yeah. shooting. Sorry, say that again. At what stage would you like to be involved in production when you're shooting a film? Um, well, normally I, I, I don't get it very involved in the script writing. Sometimes I do, but it's rare. Yeah. Uh, now, normally I just get the script and, and that's where I start. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, you're working with uh, many different directors from all over the globe. And I was wondering, if you work with a new director, where do you where do you start uh, about how to how to create the language of the movie? Like, how do you engage with them? Well, I think I, I mentioned it. Uh, I like to get to know the person. You know? uh, yeah, like how he lives, and uh, and then I can understand a little more his uh, vision. You know? Because I, 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 it's not up to me to uh, land and arrive into uh, a new uh, director and then, oh, this is how we're going to do it, no? I prefer just to wait, observe, listen, and then when I feel that I understand a little more about what I have to do, then I uh, talk. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, is another question over here? Um, before, before, oh yeah, before you meet an, uh, a director, do you gonna see all his films before he did it, or do you go there with an open mind and just see what's happening? That's important. I I, I do watch. Uh, this director work so that's uh, uh, very important to to know what i'm getting into it and uh, of course the, the the work speaks for itself so uh, yeah i i do like my homework before i get into the the production no it's no. and uh, do you do you think about the film, uh, what you're going to make with this new director, the way he did it before? Or maybe he asks you because you do it a whole different way than he did with the other DOPs? 
I, I like to think that every film has uh, its own new spirit. So I, I prefer to face uh, uh, each film as uh, like blank. Of course, there's if if it's a director that it's been working like uh, previously, uh, like a, a long filmography, then uh, I need to respect that and to understand and follow and try to to follow that uh, energy of him. Yes, but always trying to uh, do something different. Not because different, it, it just yeah. to, I think you yeah. understand. You mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. I see another question. Uh, yes, hi. Um, I was wondering, you've worked with several directors uh, in several countries and um, um, language. I don't know if you speak Portuguese, but how is it to work on a film and you don't speak the language of the characters? Uh, does that make any difference or doesn't make any difference at all? Yes, I, I did two films in Brazil. The first one, I didn't understand a, nothing in Portuguese. It was like a barrier. Now, now I do uh, speak Portuguese. Uh, I mean, Spanish and Portuguese are very close. Uh, but it was tough, yes. And, um, it, and I learned that it, it was much more to, again, observe and to be there in a different way and just to translate what was going on and also the the director didn't speak spanish uh, so it was interesting you know <laughs> and now he speaks spanish and i i speak portuguese so mm -hmm. but for example in thailand that that was something that i will i think i hope but i don't think i'm gonna learn thai it's it's you no know, <laughs> completely different uh, uh, language structure and uh, and yeah I was just like floating on set no uh, <laughs> I mean I knew the script and the lines and what was the scene about but uh, yeah it's a good good question yeah, I can imagine it's hard to uh, react intuitively if you don't understand yes. you need to be very present and awake yeah to be there otherwise you 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 go to somewhere else yeah but in that case i was the only foreigner it was like a thai crew wow <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, i have one more question if that's okay yes. yeah um regarding the scene we just saw i mean i know also from neon ball that it's um, a lot of scenes in one shot which mm -hmm. is very challenging and very interesting and very real honest in a way for me at least very what sorry honest yeah like um Barachtig, honest, yeah, I think. Yes. Um, and um, doing a sex scene is always uh, quite challenging, I think. And most people choose to do a lot of, like, sort of inserts to yes. cover it. And this is very interesting, the way you did it. And I was just wondering how that was or how that uh, Actually, that's why I think I choose it. Mm. Because uh, always shooting a sex scene... It's so complicated and, and tricky, and how you do it in a real and, uh, and natural way without making it feel fake and, uh, and uh, bad, you know? It's very, very easy to, to make it bad. I mean, I still don't know if this is good, but at least uh, we try to... Um, yeah, to create the whole moment, uh, these four people together, and uh, to build the energy uh, in with them. No, it was a, a big challenge. Uh, there were so many like little things that if if, if it were not there, then the the, the whole scene like fell, falls down. Um, Do you so shoot it many times, or not so many? Oh. No, 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 no. For the actors and no, yes, for the for the neon. If you if you saw Neon Bull, we just shot it twice, two times. This one, I think, four. And you got it or not? 
Okay. Can I ask something? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to add on your question because I think what we're, we're all talking about in long takes is that you find a new rhythm that also suits the whole film and suits the scene. Yes. Um, and you said you notice directly when it doesn't work. How was it in this scene? Because I can imagine uh, do it three more times and then you move to the other uh, woman or, y y you know, it's, is it talk like that or how do you, how do you make length feel just long enough? Mm, can you let's say movement and actions mm -hmm. normally you would say okay you move there then you, you're angry maybe you wait and then you decide to go back to her and we pan with you so that that is directly a thing you can say and you can influence uh, you know length with that mm -hmm. but I think with a sex scene like this it's just when is it too long and when is it just right D did you how did you get there I think it was up to the actors uh, uh, we set uh, like the main base, the structure of the scene. Uh, so from here, from A to B. Very like, yeah, this, this, and then open. And then we let it, let them do, you know. And this film, if we just to, if we have to f finish it up. I see the time. Okay. Uh, this point, this film's whole, this point of view is already. You say we, we used a, lo a lot of long takes and wide perspectives, but I think you chose a a, a, a really clear perspective. Can you talk mm -hmm. about that perspective? Yeah, it, it, I mean the choice of the angle was not like okay from here to here, you know. Uh, it was like uh, pretty well. I mean we thought about about it like deeply, uh, how to start it how to bring the scene into the couch and the bed, uh, how much we want to see of, of the body and, uh, you know, be careful about uh, everything and uh, to make it like erotic and real and, uh, you know, uh, that was all into that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it, it, it was being uh, connected, I, I, I was trying to be connected with them, you know? Actually, I remember that the, the, Dita, the actress, uh, she came to me and gave me a, a kiss before one shot. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. great. I think, I'm sorry, I think we need to wrap it up. So I want to thank you for your openness and your okay, thank sharing you. everything with us. And it was great talking to you. No, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, uh, thank you all for being here and asking so many interesting questions.